most of the old bolts are going to come off like this. Not a big deal if they snap off. I'm trying to remove them. I'm going to replace them with new hardware anyway. So, one way or another, they're going to come off. So all the old carriage bolts were actually kind of a pain to remove. Uh, they didn't snap off or they didn't come off cleanly. They just spun the head. So what I did is I took a grinder, ground a little slot into it, then had someone else hold a flathead screwdriver on it with a uh, crescent wrench, make sure it didn't spin, and then I was able to either snap the bolt off like this one or just spin them off and then I could get the boards off. This is a lot of the rust that I want to fix. This is the paint plus rust. It's just bad. It's everywhere. I don't think any of the rust is through. It's all 99% surface rust, but it is starting to flake. So I want to take care of it before it becomes a big problem.
paint is all done. All the rails and frames are painted. Painted the underside of them, painted the inside of them. Pretty much everywhere that had exposed metal is painted now. Normally you wouldn't flip them over, you'd get new decking. Uh, these boards are pretty old and not that good of condition, so I don't care a whole lot. The reason why you wouldn't flip them over is there's usually a crown on the boards. They have kind of a bow to them, and you want that bow actually to be up so that when water uh, rain falls on it, it just runs off the board. Having it upside down, you'd have the crown so that it would be down, and then the water would sit in the middle of the board and rot it out a little faster. But like I said, I don't really care on these boards. I'm going to replace them anyways a couple of years down the line. I just need them to last a little bit longer. I couldn't really get the rust off where the bars were. It's kind of stained into the wood, so I'm just gonna leave it. Like I said, these boards aren't perfect, not meant to be, just meant to be a little bit better than they were. This is a latex and oil-based stain and sealer in one. Kind of goes on pink, but once it dries, it starts to turn into a more red or cedar color. So I ran into an issue that I was hoping wouldn't be an issue, but I expected it. Is unless these holes are perfectly symmetrical and drilled in the exact same spots on all the boards when you flip them over, they're not going to line up, which these don't. They're not in a perfectly symmetrical pattern. So what I'm going to do is drill these out a little bit bigger, put dowels in them, uh, glue them in, and then just re-drill the holes where they need to be. There's also this one board I need to fix. It is cracked pretty far down, down to about the first set of carriage bolts. What I'm going to do is come in it from the side, drill some holes along here, and then put some screws in so that it'll hold these two pieces together from the side. And It'll be good enough for as long as I need it before I replace the wood. This is that split board. Instead of drilling a hole and then putting like a screw down into the hole, such as like a decking screw or something, I got these six inch structural screws and they're long enough that they go past the split, which is right here, and can hold it together. And all I did was just countersunk it a little bit so that the head isn't sticking out when it lays next to the other board. Um, I'll just put like four of these along here and it should hold this together really well. I had to do this one a second time. This screw just wasn't holding once it got down to the second half after the split. It just didn't hold anymore so I moved it over a little bit and that one held. Here's an example of the plugged hole. I drilled it out to a 5 8 put a 5 8 dowel in there and glued it in. Uh, something I didn't think about till after I started pounding a couple of these in is aligning the wood grain of the dowel with the grain of the board. That's just aesthetics. Um, something I'll do on the other ones, but this is how they're all going to get plugged and then I'll re-drill the holes out for the carriage bolts in the right spot. Well now the 
holes are filled, the boards are back where they're supposed to be. Something I did with these boards, I didn't do it initially because I was hoping the holes would have lined up along all the frames, but they didn't, is when I flipped these over, I also flipped side to side so that the boards are along the same board on the same edge that they originally were. That way, if there's any weird bows or um, warping to them, it kind of aligns the way it was and kind of hides those. It didn't work out totally the way I wanted, but um, it's a lot closer than if they were just flipped and left on the same side. There was a lot of gaps that I didn't like, and so that's why I did side to side as well. All of these dowels are now glued in and dry. One thing though is some of them are a little too long. They stick out on the back side, so when they're going to sit down on the frame, the board's going to sit up a little bit. So I'm just going to take a Forzner bit and grind those down a little bit. You can see where the original holes were, where the new holes are, so it originally was forward a little more on both of these, but otherwise they kind of line up. This one, maybe not so much, but what I'm going to do is put more of this stain on over this after I drill these holes so that some of the stain goes down into the hole. Then on the underside, I'm going to put some rust inhibitor on the bolts themselves, so the underside and the nuts where they hold down and fasten to the frame, those don't rust out quite as bad. So here's the top side. These are sunk down, ready to go. already put the stain back on the dowels. And here's the underside. Got washers, lock nuts, or lock washers I mean, and the nuts, and then I sprayed them down with that rust inhibitor. So these ones are good to go. Just gonna do the rest like this. So a lot of these boards are bowed. And getting them together is kind of a pain, like getting them straight and aligned so that when you drill these holes for all these uh, carriage bolts and stuff that they hold the board straight. What I did for the first couple is got a really long um, clamp and just clamped it from the edge of the board here to the edge of the frame over here. And that works for like the first three, and then I don't have a clamp long enough. So now when I'm in the center, I have these wedges, these are felling wedges, they're used for uh, trees, you know, when you're cutting the tree down, you put a wedge in it so it falls the right way. But what I'm doing is using that to put pressure on the board that I want to straighten, and so I'm on this one here, it's the very center one. And you can see that there's no gap on the right side of this board all the way down. And that's what I wanted, because it actually had a bow to the left a little bit, and putting these wedges in here takes that bow out. Something else that's good to make sure as you're, you're going here is take the width of the bed here, about 83 inches, just a little shy. And I'm at the center board now. And make sure that the center of this board is in the center of the frame. And so 41 and a half is half of 83. I'm pretty darn close and for me it's good enough. A quick note about these spare tire mounts. This is one of those cheap $20 ones that's supposed to fit a four or five lug trailer tire and the five lugs are five on four and a half and I have five on fives. What I did is I just drilled another hole down here and mounted the tire. It has no reason why I can't hold a five on five tire. I don't know why they didn't drill another hole for it, but that's all you have to do and then you can mount the tire.